Hi everybody and welcome to Organic Chem Analogies. My name is Maria Thomas and today we'll talk about how to add something to a benzene when there's already a lot of substituents on the ring. In such a case, the big question is who gets to, to decide where the new group sits. So let's start by taking a look at one such ring. Here on, on, the, on this benzene, you have three different groups attached to it. The first one in red is an OCH3 group, and that has lone pairs right next to the benzene, which means you can donate electron density into benzene, and that makes it a strong activator. Next, in yellow, you have a metal group, and that can donate to the ring weakly via hyperconjugation, which makes it a weak activator. And finally, you have a nitro group here in blue that has a positive charge right next to the ring, which means it withdraws electron density pretty strongly out of the ring, which makes it a strong deactivator. So, um, as you might have learned before, strong activators, weak activators are all orthopara directors. So both of these would be orthopara which means that they want the incoming group to be in the ortho or para position relative to them. So let's look at um, your strong activator. The ortho position is right here, the para position is right here, and those are the only ones that are open. Um, your weak activator in yellow has this ortho position right here, and the para position and the other ortho posi positions are already blocked. Um, and your strong deactivator, like you might have heard, is a meta director. And the meta position relative to that, the only one that's open, is right here. But now you see that different groups that are on the benzene ring seem to indicate different positions for the incoming group. But who gets to decide? Well, the way I like to think about it is to consider all of your activators and deactivators in a sort of continuum. And right here, your strong activators are on the top, weak acti moderate and weak below that, then your weak deactivators and going all the way down to strong deactivators. Well, your strong activator is like the boss of a company. And um, then you have the moderate activator being the next lower employee and further and further down until you get to your strongest deactivator, which is something like the lowest paid employee. So um, if there's a disagreement and people have conflicting opinions, whose opinion finally gets selected? The boss or the lowest paid employee or someone in the middle? Well, um, if other people agree with the boss, then that's fine. But if there's ever a disagreement or a conflict, the final say goes to the boss. So honestly, it doesn't matter what the other people think. What matters is what the boss, is what the boss feels, and that's who gets to make, make the decision. But now you might be wondering why. Why is the strongest activator the boss? Well, let me show you an example for that. So here I've actually drawn out examples for strong, moderate, and weak activators. And now let's take a look at what each of them does. Now, if you'll notice, the strong activator has lone pairs right next to the ring. And what it can actually do is donate the lone pairs here, basically donate them into the ring through resonance. But what about the moderate activator? He's got lone pairs he can donate into the ring too, but at the same time, he can also donate them outside the ring, right here. Which means that the overall amount that he can donate into the ring is much lower than the strong activator. And finally, you have the weak activator out here. Now that can donate electron density into the ring via hyperconjugation, but um, the amount of that is a lot lower than the ones by resonance up here. So going back to the analogy, you can think about electron density donation as the amount of contribution you make to the betterment of the company. So up here, the boss, or the strongest activator, 
donates a lot, contributes a lot to the company. And so he has a lot of power. Down here, these guys donate lesser or make fewer contributions to the company. And so they have some say, but not a lot. And as you go down and down further, further to the deactivators, they don't contribute anything. They're the lowest paid employees. They don't really want to contribute too much to improving the company. They rather take away electron density from the ring or from the company, which means that they have hardly any power in making the decisions. So now let's come back to our question. The strong activator is an ortho pair director and so wants the incoming group to be in one of these two positions. The weak activator is also an ortho director and would like the incoming group to be in this position. And finally, um, the strong deactivator is a meta director and wants the incoming group here in the meta position. So now, who do you think gets to decide? The boss, right? It doesn't matter that the weak activator and strong deactivator actually have some sense of consensus. All that matters is the opinion of the boss, the strong activator. And now you have two possible positions the boss prefers. The ortho position here, but that you can say is somewhat crowded or sterically hindered by this group here and this group here. So probably the best course of action or the best spot to pick would be this position, the para position. And actually, that is where your new group will end up. I also want to point out that the new group could be anything. It could be a bromine, it could be an OH, it could be a nitro. It doesn't matter. No matter what the new group is, it will end up in this position. So let's use this analogy to solve another problem. We have this benzene ring right here and you're trying to add this SO3H group to the ring. The, the alkyl group, the CH3 group here, is a weak activator and like we talked about, it's an ortho para director, which means it wants the, group, the SO3H to end up in one of these three positions. The nitro group is a strong deactivator and is a meta director, so it wants the SO3H to end up in the meta position. So now who gets to decide? The weak activator or the strong deactivator? Well, the strong deactivator is the lowest paid employee, so he has hardly any say. The weak activator, on the other hand, is somewhat higher up on the spectrum, so the decision maker is going to be the weak activator. He is the boss out of these two. So now, the weak activator has three different possible positions for um, directing the SO3H group. Out of that, this position is um, somewhat sterically hindered by two groups on either side, but either of the other two positions are not very hindered. In fact, they're quite similar. So the SO3H group could end up here or here. So let's try and summarize what we talked about today. When you have multiple groups on the benzene ring, the one who gets to decide where the incoming group will go is whoever is higher up on the spectrum. So the strongest activator is the highest up. He is technically like the boss. Um, and that's because he donates the most electron density, which is like the contribution he makes. To the company. Now as you go lower and lower down the spectrum, these guys are lower down in seniority which means that they donate less. And in fact when you get all the way down to the strongest deactivator, these guys donate hardly anything. In fact they actually take away from the company which means that they have almost no say in the decision making process. And finally, whoever the incoming group is, that guy has absolutely no say in where he goes. The person who decides the location of the incoming group is whoever is highest up on this spectrum, and that is regardless of what the lower employees feel. 
the only position that actually matters is the position that the boss decides. I hope this analogy was helpful. Thank you for watching.